Now that we know why we should monitor and evaluate, when should we do so? Let's first start by looking at a typical project cycle. Usually, every project begins from somewhere. It could be a situation where people are dying, it could be food insecurity, or just government demanding for aid. When this happens, there is need for an exploratory mission to have an initial assessment of the situation. The aim of this assessment is usually not only to confirm the need, but to prioritize them. The economists will call it a scale of preference. The needs are usually many. You want to focus on what is most needed and what your budget can handle. This brings us to project identification. Once the project has been identified, it is now time to move to the formulation of the project. The output of this process is a project document. This is where the logical framework and the project indicators are defined. Just for the records, the logical framework is a document that gives an overview of the objectives, activities, and resources of a project. Once you are certain you have the necessary resources and indicators for your project, the project can now be implemented. It is during this phase that you have to monitor and make necessary adjustments. At some point in the project cycle, you have to evaluate your project. This will determine whether to end your project, to do a handover, to continue implementing your project, to identify a new project, or to add a new component to your project. In summary, we monitor during the implementation phase of our project and we evaluate at given periods of time, which could be during, which we call a process evaluation, or at the end of our project, which we call an impact evaluation. So what are we really monitoring or evaluating? We are monitoring the medical activity, how many people are accessing our services. We are monitoring the clinical condition or treatment. How many people are getting their health restored. We are monitoring the tools. Do clinicians and nurses have a good time filling the data forms? Do our data clerks find the database comprehensive to use? We are also monitoring who we are reporting to. Are they satisfied with the results we produce? Does it help them to improve their activities? Now that you are a monitoring and evaluation expert, what is the main difference between monitoring and evaluation vis-a-vis -vis operational research? In monitoring and evaluation, we are collecting accurate information about our programs and using this information to improve our programs. But sometimes there are things that happen within our monitoring or evaluation systems that we cannot really answer. So operational research helps us to ask a specific question not answered by our monitoring and evaluation systems. Let me use a vague example. Let's use what is happening with the COVID-19 currently. One of the interventions that has been put in place is the obligatory putting on of masks. We expect from this intervention that the number of cases should reduce over time. But as we see, the number of cases continue to increase. This answer cannot be get gotten from our routine monitoring and evaluation systems. Probably people are not using this mask correctly. So with operational research, we could find out the attitudes, the practices, and the knowledge of people on the use of face mask. So you see how monitoring and evaluation differs from operational research. 
I will paste this link in the reference section or in the comment section of this video. It is a useful link for you to get uh, more knowledge on monitoring evaluation. It will also give you a brief overview of the project life cycle. I'm also giving acknowledgements to MSF and to CIDA for helping me um, produce this video. I use some useful materials from these two organizations. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, comment, and share our video. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.